Hello everyone, my name is Aditi, I am a law student and I am currently interning at UB Advocate under the guidance of respected Jeevan Prakash sir who is an advocate on record at Supreme Court of India. In this video, I am going to discuss about preventive detention, right to liberty versus public order. Recently, the Supreme Court ruled that the provision for preventive detention cannot be invoked of over apprehension of law and order problems and said a person can be detained only in cases where public order is directly affected. The court quashed an order passed by the Telangana government to detain an alleged habitual fraudster on the ground that he was likely to cheat more members of the public if allowed to move freely. The Supreme Court held that after differentiating between the law and order and public order, it is said that law and order comprehend disorders of less gravity than those affecting public order, which affects the larger public leading to harm, danger or alarm or feeling of insecurity. The court held that there can be no doubt that for public order to be disturbed, there must in turn be public disorder. Mere contravention of law, such as indulging in cheating or criminal breach of tr trust, certainly affects law and order, but before it can be said to affect public order, it must affect the community or the public at large. Now, let us see various constitutional provisions which are related to preventive detention. Article 22 of our constitution provides for protection against arbitrary arrest and detention. It envisages to protection to persons under both kinds of detention, namely punitive and preventive. Punitive detention is to punish a person after conviction for an offence in a court, while preventive detention is detention of a person lacking trial and conviction by a court that is to prevent a person from committing a crime in the future after an individual has been arrested this right comes into play it is not a fundamental right to be free of detention and arrest rather the objective of this right is to avoid arbitrary detention and arrest the article provides for the following safeguards according to article 22 clause 1 any person detained must be told of the reason for his detention. Furthermore, he cannot be refused the right to speak with an attorney. Supreme Court in Jogendra Kumar versus State of Uttar Pradesh uh, 1994 case entailed informing the arrested person and its ground for his arrest. According to Article 22 Clause 2, Within 24 hours of his detention, the accused person should be produced before a judicial magistrate. According to Article 22, Clause 3, no person who has been detained can be held in custody for longer than the judicial magistrate has decided. These safeguards are, however, however not applicable to enemy aliens and pe people arrested under preventive detention laws. <laughs> Further discussing the safeguards against preventive detention. If the detention lasts for more than three months, the case must be brought to the attention of an advisory board, which may include a high court judge. The detention should be extended only if the advisory board believes there are appropriate grounds for further detention. Detention grounds must be conveyed to the detainee. Detainee must be given the opportunity to make a representation against the detention order. With respect to preventive detention, the constitution splits legislative authority between the parliament and the state legislatures. The parliament has supreme authority to enact preventive detention legislation for reasons relevant to India's defense, foreign relations and security. Both the parliament and state legislatures have the power to enact preventive detention legislation for reasons related to the security of state, the preservation of public order and the provision of necessary supplies and services to the community. Now, moving further, let us see the criticism against the preventive detention. First of all, it is against the rule of law and it is believed to be so. 
second denial of right to liberty liberty of its citizen is one of the most important rights won by our forefathers after long historical and arduous struggles if the power of preventive detention is not narrowed down to limits the right to liberty will become negatory that is of no value or importance third it has a chilling effect on freedom of speech and expression detaining someone without trial must seem justifiable when there are threats to national security by using notions like public order preventive detention laws become prone to abuse for instance the national security act is used to arrest journalists critical of public figures preventive detentions are often used in tandem with the regular criminal law to keep persons in custody for longer with fewer questions asked the preventive detention regimes sanction for arrest and detention for up to 3 months without periodic review and no judicial over- oversight violates the liberty of the person now concluding although article 22 clause 3 sub clause b of the constitution of india permits preventive detention the power of preventive detention must be confined within very narrow limits otherwise it will take away the right to liberty guaranteed by article 21 of the constitution of india although the supreme court has in the past upheld them as constitutional the immense powers granted to the state under preventive detention laws and the ensuing um, suspension of the rights of detainees continue to give rise to legitimate fears that these laws will stifle civil liberties and lead to targeting of political and ideological opponents in menka gandhi case of 1978 justice krishna ayer in a pioneering judgment had remarked lawful illegality becomes the rule if lawless legislation is not removed every misuse of preventive detention laws makes an even stronger case for their critical reexamination thank you